Dako tayo sa ating pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. And uh, for the past two week, uh, we we were challenged from the preaching of God's word to uh, make disciples of all nations. And uh, again and again, lagi po natin emphasize dito sa Faith Baptist International Church that as followers of Jesus Christ, we have been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ himself to make disciples of all nations. That's why sabi natin, every believer must be a disciple maker. And I hope and pray na sana by now, whether you've been with us for a long time or even for a short time, that um, you have realized that this is God's will for us. Okay? And that as you realize that ito yung will ng Panginoon para sa atin individually as believers and corporately as a church, ay yung desire nandun sa puso natin. That we would really want to uh, be a part of this great uh, project or task that, that the Lord has entrusted to the church, which is making disciples of, of, of all nations. Okay? And um, we have em emphasized the importance of obeying the Great Commission, which is uh, making disciples of all nations, because that is our mission. That is our purpose. That's the reason why we're here. We're not just, we're not a uh, social club or whatever. Okay? We have a mission. We have a purpose why we're here. And ano yun? We're here to glorify God above all as we fulfill the Great Commission, make disciples of all nations. Ang, pri ang priority natin ay no? Great commandment. Ano great commandment? For God so. Amen. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And that is a, the Great Commission follows. Since you love God and you love your neighbor, go and what? Make disciples of all nations. Someone said, God's will for your life is fulfilling the Great Commission. God's will for your life is what? Making disciples. Yun yung will ng Panginoon. Sabi mo sa, kat sabi mo sa katabi mo, that's our mission. Tapos sabi mo, that's God's will. So ibig sabihin, if we're making disciples, we're doing God's will. We're fulfilling our mission, right? Right? Amen? Amen. So I hope and pray that by now, it's very clear to us. And if you've been a Christian for a long time, I'm sure you know this, okay? that, that that is God's will and that's our mission. But I hope and pray that that would not remain a desire and a dream, but it would be a reality in our life. Amen? Amen. That God would actually use us through His grace, through His power and mercy to actually be a disciple, a disciple maker. Sabi mo, tanay mga katabi mo, gusto mo bang mag-disciple? Ano sa dot mo? Pwede. <laughs> Dapat ano? Yes, di ba? Yes, amen. Okay. And that's why we need to pray for one another. Now, let's just have a short review of our series so far. For the past two Fridays, we looked into the first point of the outline of Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. I have two main points here: uh, uh, the the point of discipleship and the process of discipleship. Now, we'll go through the process. How do we make disciples or how do we disciple others uh, who will become disciple makers also uh, in the following weeks but so far for the past two weeks we, we've learned about what is the point or the essence or, or uh, the, the focus of the Apostle Paul here in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and um, we've looked into the emphasis of the verse and that is on the word entrust or commit and uh, uh, kung maalala nyo, uh, sabi natin yung principle dyan is discipleship is a what? Spiritual investment. When we disciple others, we invest in their lives. We make an investment, spiritual investment, spiritual deposit. So it, it's not just an activity, but we're doing something great and something no, noble, right? And may, we, when we entrust the gospel, the word of God to others, I, um, we are um, making a very... Uh, doing a spiritual investment that will yield into what? Of course, the eternal dividends. Okay? So, discipleship is a spiritual investment. Then we look into the etymology of the word, in the Greek, the meaning of the word, no? And um, sabi natin, discipleship is also a subjective what? 
involvement. As you entrust, you don't you have to be up close and personal, be actively involved in doing that action as you entrust um, the gospel or the word of God to others, the things that you have learned to others, okay? It's um, it's a subjective involvement or personal involvement. We need to really invest our life, okay? It's not just a lesson to lesson things I've been at, but it's a life to life, okay? It's a sharing of life, okay? Kaya uh, hindi rin ganun kadali. Uh, we need to really spend time and effort and even talents uh, so that we can make disciples of all nations, okay? Now, when it happen, um, I would like first to look into the extent or the weight of the of the challenge or the command given by Paul to Timothy here in 2 <coughs> Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And let's read starting from verse number 1 up to verse number 7. Let's all stand in honor of the reading of the word of God. Basahin po natin sa I'll read verse 1. And we'll read verse 2 and so on until verse number 7. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, verses 1 to 7. Verse 1, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Verse 7, consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of this word. Let's pray. Lord, we ask and pray that you will give us understanding as we study your word. Cause us to listen to you, O God, as you speak to us personally. Pray for your spirit to work powerfully in our midst. Remove any distractions, any work of the enemy. And uh, may your will be done in, in our life today. Lord. We give you back the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let me take your seats. As we begin, I would like to give you the third principle uh, in discipleship. And, this, and that is discipleship is a serious interest or a serious pursuit or endeavor. Okay? For the sake of alliteration, I use the word interest. Okay? So, discipleship is a serious interest or pursuit. Someone said, if a bakery does not produce baked goods, there is something radically wrong with it. By the same token, there is something radically wrong with a church that is not winning people to Christ and helping them grow spiritually. The church must enable every member of its congregation to win souls and make disciples. God never intended for the pastor to win all the souls and teach all the classes. Revival will produce a well-mobilized laity for God's glory. Okay? I don't know if you realize that um, making disciples for discipleship is a serious business. It's a serious business to God. And it's not just the pastor or the leaders of the church who needs to take it seriously, but every Christian, every believer, every disciple must take it into heart and take seriously the Great Commission uh, making disciples of all nations. And according to the quote, if we're not making disciples, anong sabi niya? There's something radically wrong with us. Pagpunta na ba kayo sa bakery na pagpunta nyo doon, sabi, may tinapay po ba kayo? Ay, wala. Hindi kami nagtitinda ng tinapay. Eh, bakit bakery? Di ba? Ano sasabihin mo sa mi-ari? <laughs> Mapalta niyo yung pangalan niyo, di ba? Now, the same thing is true with the church, according to him. If we're not making disciples, there's something wrong with us. That's why we, we always encourage and challenge everyone that that's the purpose of our church, to make disciples of all nations, leading others to Christ and allowing them and causing them to grow in their relationship with 
uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So when I say that discipleship is a serious interest or endeavor or pursuit, I mean that we should seriously consider making disciples as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi lang siya activity or program na ginagawa natin sa church para maging busy tayo o para maging active tayo or para may involvement lang or para masaya or whatever, may training, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, as, as I have mentioned earlier, this is God's will. This is God's mission for us. And it's either we do it or not, okay? But if we don't, what happens? We, we disobey. Remember Pastor Paul's preaching last June? Right? It's the main thing. It's a command. And if we don't make disciples, we are clearly disobeying God. So making disciples is a serious thing. Okay? Why? Well, Let's try to look into the word again and trust. Uh, so, and sa, sa Greek, okay? And let's have a parsing. Alam niyo yung parse? Parsing? Sa Greek language kasi, na nasa seminary kami, although I'm not an expert in Greek, no? pero pinagdaanan namin ng konti, meron kami tinatawag na parsing. Okay? Hindi yan yung, ano, yung language ng Iran, no? Parse, parse, no? Hindi yan. Parsing. Ang parsing is, Pag papasok kami sa school, ano na yan, pag in-analyze namin na words, sasabihin ng, sasabihin ng professor na, oh, do the parsing for that word. Um, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng parsing? Well, parsing is the exercise by which one identifies the particular form of a given word. So you try to identify whether the word is a noun, a verb, an adjective, or ano, etc., etc. And based on that, you try to uh, d- distinguish whether, ano ba, singular, plural, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, gets nyo? Okay, so basically that's parsing, you know. So, um, let's look at the, let's try to parse the Greek word paratuo, which is the Greek word for entrust in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2, again from the from the root word paratitheni, okay? So, when you try to do parse yung paratuo, it's a, part of speech is a what? Verb, okay? Verb. The tense is ours. The mood is imperative, meaning it's a, a command. The voice is middle. The person is second person. The number is singular. Kaya sabi ni Paul, you, Timothy. Okay? And trust. Okay? So, the, the word in trust is a verb, which means it's an action that must be done. And the mood is imperative, meaning it's a command given by Paul to Timothy. The tense is in the aorist tense, kaya sabi, sabi nila na, um, the word in trust is in the aorist imperative, it means it's a command calling for immediate action. Para si sabi ni Paul, do it, just do it, do this now, don't delay, don't procrastinate. There's the sense of urgency when Paul said, entrust to faithful men. Commit thou to faithful men. Okay? It's something that shouldn't be set aside. Kaya mahalaga siya. Ma, ma, ma importante siya. But what's, what's more interesting is the, when you look at the voice of the verb, okay? it's in the middle voice. In ancient Greek, may, it's either yung verb ay, ano ba, ano ba yung mga voice? Active voice. Okay? Soprano. <laughs> uh, active voice, passive voice, and middle voice. Pag active voice, yung verb, ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Subject. The subject is the doer of the action. Kapag passive, the subject is what? The receiver of the action. Kapag middle naman, ano? Hindi mo alam. <laughs> the subject is both the doer and also the what? The receiver of the action. According to a definition, the subject of the verb is seen as acting upon itself or for its own benefit. So when Paul commanded Timothy and trust, he's, he's expecting Timothy to act upon himself for his own, for his own benefit. Uh, in oversimplistic terms, sometimes the middle form of the verb could be translated as the performer of the action actually acting upon himself. Like for example, as English, say English, um, I am washing myself, or I am washing my feet. Okay, 
So yung, yung washing na yan ay ano? Nasa middle. Kasi sino yung subject? Doer na action. At ako rin yung ano? Yung receiver na action. Okay? So when Paul commanded Timothy to entrust, Paul expects Timothy to act on himself in order to carry out the command. That's why in discipleship, ano yan, intentional yan. It doesn't just happen. In order to be involved and be successful in making disciples, disciples, disciples of all nations, we must act upon ourselves. Okay? It, um, we must push ourselves. We have to act upon ourselves intentionally in order to commit or entrust the gospel of the word of, or the word of God to, to others. Intentional yan. Hindi basta-basta mangyayari yan. Okay? We can, I can encourage you, I can push you, but you yourself must sorry, act on yourself. And at the same time, you, you, you're, you're the one who would benefit from it. Anyways, right? So, uh, I, if, you, if you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 to 8, I guess, um, we can see a picture here in Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, sorry, First Thessalonians, chapter two, verses seven to eight. Paul wrote to the Thessalonian believers, verse seven. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves because you have become very dear to us. Okay? So the Apostle Paul acted upon himself to make sure that as he preaches the gospel to the Thessalonian believers and um, disciples them, he would do it in a gentle way, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. Paano ba mag-alaga ang isang ina ng kanyang sariling anak? Di ba? Um, Camille and I, I, in a few weeks time, ay malapit na ulit mag-alaga ng, ng infant. Okay? Uh, pray for Camille. I, uh, her date, initial date for her delivery would be November 29. Okay? And then after that, umpisa na ulit ng aming ano, roller coaster experience in taking care of baby two. The last time we, we took care of an infant, I uh, six years ago, when about more than six years ago, ano, when Zoe was uh, when Zoe was born. Okay, paano ba paano ba magalaga ng baby? Sino sa inyo may experience sa magalaga ng baby? Uh, di ba? Paano ba mag For example, paano mo ba paligo ng baby? Di ba? Yung infant, newborn. Lalagay mo ba yan sa bathtub? Ganon. Tapos kukunin mo yung shower, i-spray mo ganon. Ganon ba yan? Tapos bubudbura mo ng, ng detergent. <laughs> okay, tapos spray mo ulit. Okay, ganon. Tapos pinasparasa mo ganon. Tapos ganon ba yan? Hindi. Hindi, di ba? What do you do? You do it, what? Gently. Kaya nga nung, nung the first time Zoe came, parang... Ayaw akong kargahin kasi parang very ano very sensitive, di ba? Parang pag hinawakan ko baka mabali yung buto niya, baka malaglag siya, baka mabata ka, etc., etc. You have to really what? Take good care. Why? Because very sensitive. Yeah. Kung ang kung sa iyo okay na yung yung ano yung bareta na panlaba pang ligo, sa baby hindi. Di ba? Dapat ano? Hypo allergen. Kung sa'yo, kahit tatlong araw mo nang hindi nilalaban yung, yung t-shirt mo, so parang hindi, sa baby dapat ano, daging, bagong laba, malinis. I remember um, when we uh, when ba Zoe was still an infant and she she was uh, uh, using, ano yung, bot, yung bote, di ba? Talagang we would spend time, uh, almost an hour, just washing the bottles every day. Nakuhugas talaga. Hindi pwede yung pagkat daddy niya, banlaw lang na gano'n, okay na, tapos timpla ulit. Hindi. Huhugasan mo talaga yan, di ba? Tapos pagkahugas mo, mabanlaw ako maigi, ano pang gagawin mo? Sterilize mo pa. Hindi, hindi ba pwedeng gano'n na lang? 
Hindi, di ba bakit? Kasi yung yung condition, yung safety, yung health ni baby nakadepende kanino? Sa amin. If we don't take our responsibility seriously, what will happen to to the baby? Wala. Baka emergency kagad yan. Di ba? So, uh, what happens to Zoe is our responsibility. And her health and safety uh, depend on whatever we will provide to her. And I think this is the essence of the voice of the verb in trust. That's why the Apostle Paul used the middle voice. He wanted to show Timothy that as a disciple of the Lord who does the work of the ministry, who preaches the gospel, and who um, guides others to, to grow in their relationship with the Lord, he is personally responsible to entrust what he himself has learned from Paul to others. Okay? And as one, one commentator made a comment on this passage, sabi niya, the middle voice is an intensive middle which places strong emphasis on the subject as participating in the action. And listen to this. Timothy is personally responsible for producing this action. He himself, no one else, is personally responsible for producing this action. Paul might command him. Paul might push him. Paul might give him opportunity to do so. But Timothy is personally responsible for entrusting to others what he himself has learned from Paul when Paul entrusted to him the things that he has learned from, from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, what? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. So the act of disciple making or entrusting to others what we ourselves have learned okay, in our Christian life is a personal responsibility. This is the reason why every Christian, every believer, every disciple must disciple others. Okay? Dahil ano, lahat tayo personally responsible. Other word for that ay ano, accountable. Hindi lang ang pastor, hindi lang ang leaders, hindi lang yung small group leaders nyo or whoever. Every believer is accountable and responsible. Unang una sa Panginoon. Right? That's why discipleship is a believer's personal responsibility. Um, is, uh, another commentator said this, the solemn, solemnity and seriousness of this transfer of the words Timothy had heard is highlighted by Jesus' use of the same verb in Luke chapter 12 verse 48. Where he declares that from everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much of him, they will ask all the more. Although again, the context speaks of differing degrees of punishment for the unregenerate, those who reject Christ's free gift. Warren Mercy asks that Luke 12, 48 can be applied in principle to believers at the judgment seat of Christ for... Jesus is stating a general principle. What's the general principle? The more we have from God, anian, the greater our what? Accountability before God. The more we have from God, the greater accountability we have before God. Bakit natin kailangan i-transfer yung gospel sa iba? Kasi it was entrusted to us. Tama? God gave us that precious gift of eternal life, that precious gift of salvation. It was deposited in us by others. And because we, when it was deposited to us, we received it and we believed it. Okay? And that's from God, the gift of salvation. Therefore, we are now personally accountable and responsible to God na yung dineposit sa atin na hindi ano? Hindi masasaya. The more we receive, the more we are accountable before God. So if you have experienced God's saving grace, 
Tandaan natin, accountable tayo sa Panginoon. Anong ginagawa natin sa gospel na tinanggap natin? Para ba, para ba yung ano? Magandang plato, pinggan, at baso na lumalabas lang kapag may bisita at nakatago sa 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 cabinet na maganda, no? Okay? For God, the more we are accountable before God. Kaya ito sabi nung ano? With, with great power para mas kabisali nyo pa yung kaya sa Bible verse. <laughs> Ano yan? Okay? With great power or privilege comes a great responsibility. For example, if God has given you the talent to sing, you're more accountable before God to use that talent okay, for His glory. Di ba? So kung may boses ka at maganda yung boses mo, pero hindi mo ginagamit, uh, mananagot ka kayo. Minsan, mas okay pa. Kahit yung minsan, yung walang boses, yun yung gustong-gustong. <laughs> Lord, gamitin mo yung boses ko. Kakanta ako para sa'yo. Sasabihin ni Lord, okay lang, hindi naman kita. <laughs> hindi naman kita binigyan eh. Okay lang yan, hindi ka accountable dyan, hindi ka responsible dyan. Kaya ka na kumanta, mag-preach ka na lang. Sige, pray ka na lang. Eh pero yung may boses, binigyan, pero hindi ko makanta, uh, accountable. Kung may, uh, may time, you may time. We're, we're all given time, right? Or, or treasures, earthly, er, earthly possessions. If the Lord has blessed you and you're not using it, okay, you will be accountable. The more we have, the more we would become accountable. Sa Panginoon. Kaya when you look at it, why do you why do we need to make disciples of all nations? Because we are all accountable if you're a believer. Why? Because we have received God's precious gift of salvation. Yung gospel nasa atin. Tinanggap natin. Pinanampalatayanan natin. And since na-experience natin yung love, yung mercy, yung grace ng Panginoon, dapat may transfer din natin yung sa iba. Personally, lahat tayo, we are accountable before God. Sabi mo sa katil mo, you are accountable. <laughs> are you responsible? Okay? Although as your pastor, of course, part of my responsibility is to equip you and to train you. Okay? That's why we had our witness to win. Okay? And yung preaching and Yung, yung, yung administration leadership as far as making disciples is concerned. That's why starting next year, we will start to focus on our faith communities, our faith groups, and we would have a planning session tomorrow with, with some of the leaders and potential leaders for that. We try to do our best to, to equip you and to provide opportunities for you so that you can obey and fulfill the command of the Lord. But again, Kahit anong gawin namin, if you will not take personal responsibility for what was entrusted to you by God, sayang na. Kahit anong gawin namin, wala eh. Kaya minsan ano, if you're in the leadership, for example, and you see na parang kahit anong pukpuk mo na ano, ng pulpit, pag nagpipreach, tulog pa. <laughs> kahit anong push mo, minsan parang wala na yan, no? Pero as long as, parang at the end of the day, I realized, Lord, that as long as I did my part, that's my responsibility. I am accountable to you. Si, kayo? Si Lord, kayo, you're personally accountable to God. <coughs> Di ba? Lahat tayo mananagot sa ating Panginoon. Okay? So that's why I said that discipleship is a serious interest or pursuit or endeavor yan basta-basta. Okay? We will all personally give an account to God someday. And the more that God has given us so that we can make disciples of all nations, the more we would be responsible before God. What has God given to you? Sabi niya kay Moses, what's in your hand? 
May kotse ka ba? Ginagamit mo ba yan for making disciples? Paano? Ay, karamihan dito yung nagsusundo talaga. Susundo yung matara. Susundo kita para you know, maka-church tayo or Bible study tayo, attend tayo prayer meeting, etc. Et may bahay ka ba? Pwede mo gamitin yun. May flat, di ba? Para sa ano? Center for Bible study for discipleship. Ano pa? Yung, yung career mo, profession mo, pwede mong gamitin yan. Di ba? Kung may talent ka sa ano, ano ba? Nung usap ka ni Brother Robert, di ba? Uh, ano siya? Uh, sa ano yan? physical fitness. And sabi niya, siguro gagawin ko parang ano, mag-offer ako ng free classes. Uh, di ba? Para lahat ng matataba pumayat. Di. <laughs> uh, 10 minutes lang. Pero sabi ko sa kanya, maganda yan. Pero maganda, no Bible, no workout. Di ba? Pwede, di ba? O kaya, mahilig tayo sa basketball. Sabi ko, brother Jun, organize tayo, gawin natin weekly para nakaka-exercise na tayo. At the same time, pag dumami na yan, it can be an opportunity for us to share the gospel. No Bible, sabi sa Philippines, meron no Bible, no, no basketball. Ano ba? Matahin pa, di ba? What's in your hand? Remember, the more that the Lord has entrusted to us, the more we are accountable before God. That's why, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Sabi ni Apostle Paul. And we'll close with this. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 17. First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 17. Sabi niya, for if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For what? Necessity is laid upon me. Although he was an apostle, but he was also a believer. Okay? Sabi niya, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Hindi niya sinabing, wow to me. Yeah, para minsan pa hindi na din. Wow, ikaw na. Yeah. Sabi niya na, woe. Yeah, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. 17, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still what? Entrusted with a stewardship. Gawin ko man to willingly, okay, may reward ako. Kahit gawin ko man, pero napipilit na lang ako, I have no choice. I am entrusted with a what? Stewardship. And that's the key, that's the essence of the word entrust. When you deposit, when you entrust, you take care of something so that that precious thing ay ano, may pasa mo rin sa iba. Stewardship. Okay? And um, that's why we need to take discipleship very seriously. Now, why, why seriously make disciples of all nations? Based on 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 17, I, I will give you three reasons. Number one, because it is required. Every believer is compelled and must be compelled to preach the gospel. Sabi ni Paul, necessity is laid upon me. I, ano ba yung sabihin ng necessity? Pag saya, Oh, nasaan ka? Necessity ako. Yeah. Uwi ka na sa probinsya. <laughs> yung ba yun? Ano ba yung sabihin ng necessity? Okay? Kailangan. Kung baka, another, you must. Di ba? We must preach the gospel. That's why, kung baka, no one is exempted. Everyone must preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Parang pangit pakinggan, pero parang no choice. Christian ka, sinig ka ng Panginoon, pinili ka. No choice. You have to make this up. Pastor, mag na lang ako, kanta na lang ako sa praise and worship. O, oh, kung makakanta ka, pero dapat mag-make disciple ka rin. You must. Pastor, uh, as a children's ministry na lang ako, or 
ano na lang ako, support na lang ako. Okay? Make disciples, ano, mahihain kasi ako. I'm shy. Support na lang. Well, sige, maganda yan, support ka. Pero you still must make disciples. Why? Sabi? Because necessity is, is laid upon us. Whether we do it willingly or unwillingly, we still have to do it. Why? Because sabi, every believer is a steward of the gospel. You're a steward of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anong stu- di ba stewardship? Alala niya? Ano sabi sa 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2, I think? Ano? It is required of stewards that they would be found what? Faithful. Since we are all stewards of the gospel, are we faithful stewards of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay? So that's why we need to get started uh, getting serious with making disciples. Because hindi natin pwedeng takasan ito eh. Pagdating ng araw, hindi tayo, kahit anong dahilan natin, pagharap natin kay Lord, siguro sasabihin niya, uh, nag-make disciples ka ba? Eh, Lord, busy kasi ganito lang ito. Nag-make disciples ka. Kaya, since our faith community will be the main avenue for our evangelism and discipleship starting next year, ang gusto natin ay maging committed tayo sa faith communities natin na start getting involved with our faith communities. If there's no commu- uh, faith group within your community, then start one. Okay? Dapat ang goal natin ay hindi lang tayo maging member ng faith community later on as we grow, ay ano dapat we will be leaders on our of our own faith groups. So that as we grow, we lead others to grow as well in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So yung sa katabi mo, no choice ka. So attend ka ng faith community. Okay? So, first reason, it is required. Second reason, it is a reproach if you don't. Sabi ni Paul, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Ano ibig sabihin ng woe? It's an expression of grief or denunciation. Para sinasabi ni Paul, I am a miserable person. I am a wretched person. I am the worst person in this world if I will not preach the gospel. In other words, if you're a believer, you're a Christian, and you don't make disciples, parang miserable Christian. Parang ganun, di ba? Parang ganun siya. Why? Because if it's, if, ano yung sabi one, it is required, it's our responsibility. If you don't do it, it means you are one. Ano opposite ng responsible? An irresponsible father is a miserable father. Tama? <laughs> eh, man, lakas ng hugot mo, may hugot <laughs> An irresponsible mother is a miserable mother too. Right? Ha? Uh, para ay sugot ng mga lalaki, bawin tayo. An irresponsible child is a miserable child. An irresponsible boss is a miserable boss. Di ba? An irresponsible employee is a miserable employee. An irresponsible Christian, kayo nagsabi nyo na. Agree ba kayo doon? Ha? Pwede, no? So, do you want to be miserable or do you want to be responsible? Ano yung mga Ano? Miserable or responsible? Gitna na lang. Ano kaya doon? Responsible Christians make disciples of all nations. Responsible members of FBIC faithfully must attend our faith communities. Ha? Huh? Kaya lang yun. Sabi ko di ba last Friday, paano ba? Well, let's, let's start with our faith communities. Okay? Let's work on that. And let's pray that through that, we'll be able to obey and fulfill God's command of making disciples of all nations. Okay, so, number one, it's required. It, number two, it's a reproach if you don't. But number three, ito maganda, it's rewarding. Ma? First two reasons can cause you to 
preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. Pero sabi ni Paul, if you do it not out of your own will, bali mo na. Well, you still have to do it anyways. But if you do it out of your will, ibig sabihin, ginusto mo, desire mo, voluntarily, willingly, you do it, what happens? Ano sabi dyan? You will be what? Rewarded. There's a reward. Di ba? Sabi ni Pastor Ed Paul, God is a God who rewards. Amen? We cannot deny that. Kaya yung sabi sa comment, pagdating sa judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Tatanin ng Panginoon. Ano yung in-trust ko sa'yo? Ginamit mo ba? If you're a faithful steward, you will get your reward. If you're a, ano yung opposite ng faithful? Pero doon sa parable, wicked. Di ba? Steward. You will lose your reward. Okay? So, it pays to disciple others. Amen? Sabi mo, sabi mo sa katabi mo, it pays to disciple. It pays to disciple. Or it pays to make disciples. It pays to make disciples. Okay. I'll close with this. Uh, I saw this illustration uh, online. Sabi dito, when Queen Victoria was a child, she didn't know she was in line for the throne of England. Her instructors, trying to prepare her for the future, were frustrated because they couldn't motivate her. She just didn't take her study seriously. Finally, her teachers decided to tell her that one day, she would become the Queen of England. Upon hearing this, Victoria quietly said, Then, I will be good. So, nanalaman niya, magiging Queen pala ako. Parang sinabi na, dapat ayusin ko na yung buhay ko. Ayusin ko na yung sabili ko. Right? The realization that she had inherited this high calling gave her a sense of responsibility that profoundly affected her conduct from then on. Brethren, as believers, we have a very high calling from God. Amen? We are stewards of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pero ang dapat lang gawin natin, no? we need to realize that. And once we realize that, let's take responsibility. And let us make disciples of our Lord Jesus. God, basahin na nga ito ko that already go. God has given me the responsibility of spreading the gospel of the world. Are you ready to use all at your disposal so that we can make disciples of all nations? Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask and pray, Lord, that you would bless these truths into our hearts. The enemy will try to snatch it from our hearts. But we pray that you would just allow it to cause it to sink in deep not just into our minds, but into our hearts. Allow it to take root on the Lord. Cause us to be not just hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. And uh, we pray that as we wait for your coming, that this desire of being used by you to disciple others would be a reality in each and every one's life. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us if we procrastinated, if we don't did not make give importance to this, or if we just neglected this responsibility. And we pray, Lord, that you would raise up men and women of faith here in our church who would take that responsibility, take that high calling seriously, because we are serving a great God and we love you and you have commanded us to love you above all with our own and to love others as well so Lord we address to ourselves use us for your Lord in Jesus name